everyone, my name is Abhishek Jain and welcome back to the Kubernetes tutorial series part 3. Let's quickly do the recap what we had covered in the previous video. In the previous video, we understood how we can initialize any machine as a Kubernetes cluster master. Right? So we use a kube adm init command to initialize a Kubernetes cluster and we and that kube, kube adm init command makes that underlying host machine as a master. Then we understood how we can set up a Ubuntu user to use a kubectl command which is nothing but a, com a component of a kube, Kubernetes which actually help us to manage and control the Kubernetes cluster and we are gonna see the use of a kube, kubectl in today's video. Then we understood how we can deploy a pod network for a containerization network interface of Calico. So let's quickly go to the uh, master machine which we initialize with the kube adm and if you remember then we when we run a kube ctl get node command after deploying a pod network right uh, status become a ready and be before that pod network deployment was not ready right and uh, one and and, and at the, when when the kube init command completely completed successfully uh, it gave us a join command which i'm gonna just paste here right so let's understood this command right so whenever you know uh, whenever you know any machine any other machine want to join this kubernetes cluster then there has to be a bidirectional trust what does it mean it means that the node which are going to join this uh, this particular master machine it should be uh, it sh it should be a trusted it should be a trust right to trust mean node should be able to trust on a master machine how how would that happen so there are two ways which kubernetes use the one option is a discovery and another one is a tls bootstrap but that is not in a scope of this particular tutorial series because that is a very advanced topic but for now you understand here it is just created here it is using a shared token of discovery and that is why we are using this option discovery uh, token GA certification hash and there is a SAR256 hash value. So no need to worry about this token and these things are just being utilized here to ensure that if any other machine is going to join to the Kubernetes cluster on this master machine then it can trust on this particular machine. The important part here is the IP and this port number which is a 6443. So you have to make sure that this particular port is open to accept any request which is coming from the outside of the network so in my case the machine which i have it is already open to accept the connection on this particular port right so what we have to do is i have already uh, created two machines right so if i just come here and it's a slave two and the another machine which we have is a slave one so the another thing which you have to ensure is the kube adm should be installed on all the machines whatever machine you want to join to the kubernetes cluster right so if i just put the kube and kube adm version so it's fine so i just need to run this command from here that's it and if i just go back to the master machine and if i run the kube ctl again get nodes it will give us now two machines so another one is not ready but this is just joined this cluster because of this particular command right the another thing which i wanted to cover here is since it's a discovery so you can see something is happening for just setting up that trusted communication the good part is the kubelet because kubelet is the one which actually gets interacted with the kubernetes master right and if i just go back to the my ppt uh, if you remember in the previous release i used this particular flow diagram to explain you so kubelet is something i just intentionally put on a worker node because kubelet actually interact with the api server which is running on a kubernetes master right so i think by now it should be ready yes if i run the same command on another machine Copy correctly, the content was changed, so no need to worry about. Let me just go back to that machine again. Okay, so now we should be having not ready it will take them it will take some time and it will also become ready, right? Uh, but if you just see the content here, right? 
run cube ctl get nodes on the master to see this node join the cluster or not from here you will just get with this node has joined the cluster but if you want to check uh, whether it has been uh, joined the cluster or not for that you have to run the cube ctl related command on your master machine that is one part now due to any reason if you want to leave the cluster what you have to do then so in that case you have to come down to the cube adm and you have to use a reset command right if you will use a reset command on slave 2 let's see what happened uh, so let's quickly check whether this yeah. so all the all the two machines had joined this uh, kubernetes cluster so if i just put a cube adm reset right just see what warning message we are getting changes made to this host by cube in it or cube join will be reverted but here we haven't run the cube in it we run only the cube adm cube adm join so that is going to be reverted if i just put yes and you have to run to this command for proper cleanup so that all the ip tables related entry which is related for you know so this is just a way to just controlling the it's kind of firewall related ip on so it's good to run this particular uh, command so let's if i just go back to the master machine again and if i just run the same command So if you will see here the reset process does not reset clean up this so that is the reason I just ran that command but it will take some time. Yeah. So now it has become not ready. So that is how uh, the you can join another machine it's pretty simple and that is how you can just leave the cluster as well right now there are few more commands uh, let me just quickly rejoin that. Now there are few more command which I wanted to tell you related to the kubectl. If I just put the kubectl help here, you will see the most important command which I am going to use in the next up or the upcoming video is the create to just create the resources from a file. Then we're going to use the expose. Expose is really important that we're going to see. Kubectl run is also a good one and uh, Maybe we will start with the run and this kubectl run is pretty much same as a running up image by the docker docker run we're gonna understand this in our upcoming videos apart from that get you're gonna use a lot because if you will see that we have used kubectl get nodes similarly we can use for pods that's the another basic unit of kubernetes uh, but right now we don't have any pod is running on our cluster so you to get uh, some sense of pods we're gonna cover pod in the next video definitely because that is going to be the first concept before we actually run any container on our kubernetes cluster right so if i just put the cube cube ctl get pods all namespaces right then you can see the pods which are related which are running on a different different you know uh, basically pod is nothing but uh, inside the pod all the container actually runs and we're gonna understand this pod concept in the next video but don't worry about it for now, the another thing uh, we have used in the previous video as well uh, with the kubectl is apply. Apply is where we have a YAML file and we can just put that YAML file and we can apply that. So, and apart from that, there are a lot of command related to the kubectl like kubectl get SVC is also another one, right? Then we have a kubectl cluster info that gave us some cluster info, right? So that's it from my side for this video. Now it's up to you how you want to, you know, explore the other command as well. Uh, but as far as the topic I choose for today's video is just how, how you can, you know, join the another machine which is running on a, maybe on a different cloud or maybe it's a different physical machine. You just need to take out the join command which cube ADM in it is going to provide, is going to provide you. And you just need to run that command on your worker machine right so that's it from my side for this particular video if you have any feedback any comment or you face any problem in running these commands just feel free to put that in a comment section and i'll be more than happy to help you out on that so as always stay healthy and keep learning a new stuff and until next video uh, bye and have a nice day Hi. thank you